All right, we got a comment from Roderick. He says, Brother Jimmy, you got to see this. This is blatant and must be shown who the wolves are. All right, hold on to your hat. Hey, everybody, Sean here, and I hope you're doing well. Yes, you read that title correctly, so let's jump right in. My friends, if you are a follower of Rod Parsley and have justified his ridiculous rant in this video, or even his greedy attitude in this video, I pray that this video will finally convince you that Rod Parsley is not a man of God that should be listened to. You ought to send a $40 gift or more right now to get that last message, seven declarations from the cross. Do you know that Jesus never said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He never said it. Wow, you're quiet. Looks like I need to preach that again. Or you can just get the message, and I won't have to do it again. I prove to you that Jesus never said that. If Jesus, if the Father would have forsaken Jesus, Jesus could forsake you. God turned his back on Jesus, Jesus can turn his back on you. And he will not. So he never said it. The King James Version says he said it. But the King James Version is wrong. Is there really anything to say? Nothing is being taken out of context, and this is pure ignorance and flawed man-made logic to prove God's word as being wrong. And Rod, it's not only the King James Version that says that. All versions shown here say that exact same thing with exception of the New Living Translation that uses the word abandoned instead. Seriously, if you're going to justify this preacher saying something so foolish, then I don't know what to say. May God have mercy on you and bring you to your knees in repentance. Even Satan was more subtle in the Garden of Eden and caused Eve to be confused about whether God said something. Rod is calling God's word a lie, and if you choose to continue following him, then it's on you. What are you going to say when you stand before God? Well, Lord, I know what your word says, but I chose to believe Rod instead. Anyhow, I'm a bit stunned on this one, so please leave your thoughts in the comments below, and until next time, take care and God bless. Alright, so that's interesting, isn't it? So let's take a look at... Uh, where Jesus says that and it's interesting I want to point out a couple of things here see if I can find it first um, this is obviously in reference to when he was on the cross and just before he died Uh, <clears throat> right there it is. So it's interesting. He says he trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And he saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the King of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. Uh, that's interesting as well. But uh, right here... Right here it says, About the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama shapalagimala. That is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Alright, so that's very, very interesting, isn't it? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So. so um, and then they gave he said he thirst and they gave him vinegar and he, and he gave up the ghost right alright so in my this is my opinion now I, I think he the reason well how do I say this there's a very obvious reason why he said that but then also I, I would say that uh, he was in our flesh God was in our flesh and so he resembled that all the way to his death okay now let's go let's 
get to the more obvious reason. And let's take a look at something here. Now, it, parsley, just to remind you, he says that back on you, and he will not. So he never said it. He, he never said it. He says that Jesus never said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And this is pure insanity. <clears throat> it's as if this guy's never read the Bible in his entire life. All right, so I'm gonna. I want to go over Psalm 22. <clears throat> I'm kind of jumping around. I, I know that, but first of all, let's establish. This that he's saying, well, the King James is wrong. The King James Bible is wrong. But you see here, <laughs> you can see here on the right, nearly every Bible perversion uses the word forsaken. Now, I, I have a little bit of a problem with abandoned, but I won't get into that. I. <laughs> Why have you left me alone? Oh no, I don't like that either. But isn't it interesting? He points out to the King James Version. He attacks the King James Version. But he's not attacking these other versions that say the very same thing. Uh, your popular ESV, your NIV, your NASB, I mean these are, <clears throat> excuse me, these are all the popular Bible perversions. And they say it as well, but he goes after the King James Bible. And the obvious reason is because the King James Bible is the pure, perfect Word of God in the English language. Now, Psalm 22. Uh, what is the context? So this is, this will take five minutes to read, 31 verses uh, yeah let me just read maybe half of it okay my God my God why has thou forsaken me why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring oh my God I cry in the daytime but thou hearest not and in the night season and am not silent but thou art holy O Lord I'm oh, sorry but thou art holy O Thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou did deliver them. They cried unto thee, and were delivered. They trusted in thee, and were not confounded. But I am a worm, and no man, a reproach of men, and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot me out of the lip. They shake the head, saying, he trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him, let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. But thou art he that took me out of the womb, thou did make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb, thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths, as a ravening and a roaring lion. lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of my joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of the death. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they have pierced my hands and my feet. <clears throat> I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me, they part my garments among them, and cast lots upon my vesture. But be thou not far from me, O Lord, O my strength, haste thee to help me, deliver my soul from the sword my darling from the power of the dog 
Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name unto my brethren, in the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him, and fear him. All ye the seed of Israel. For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, neither has he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard, My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. All they that be fat upon the earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him, and none can keep alive his own soul. And none can keep alive his own soul. Right, so we don't save ourselves, only God can save us. A seed shall serve him, it shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born, that he has done this. All right, so this is um, you know, clearly uh, a fulfilling a prophecy or fulfilling an Old Testament scripture when when Jesus says my God my God why hast thou forsaken me and so this idea that well, Jesus never said that I guess David never said that in Psalm or whoever is accredited with that so I, I think it was David I don't know just we'll call it Psalm 22 uh, the pro the the scripture is fulfilled when he says that and again I think the reason is because he is in our flesh and he is um, experiencing the pain that we go through when we die right so he's he's showing us that he, hey if he can overcome death we can overcome death through him no matter how bad it might seem to us we can take comfort in the fact that he has overcome. So, uh, this whole idea, hey, don't believe the Bible, send me money, I'll tell you what God says, it's ridiculous, utterly ridiculous. And it's interesting, because I used to watch Rod Parsley. He looks different to me. Back in the day, he used to have darker hair. There he is. That's the guy I remember right there, Mr. Shyster. So he's obviously he's got a lot of money now. And he's doing pretty good. Got his own TV show and making lots of money. Got the beard and a fancy haircut. Good job out of him. The only problem is, buddy, you're a great example of what not to believe. Right? Okay, that's enough. Thanks for sharing that. Brother Roderick, appreciate that. All right, obviously, I'm. It's unbelievable. This guy's super popular. Super. This guy here is popular. This guy's got him a hundred times over. Anyways, that's enough. Oops. <laughs>